What's up, sports bettors? I got a lot of sharp plays on underdog fantasy, so I'm going to share them with you. And again, the way this platform works is any three picks you select, you're going to see you're betting one to win six, right? It doesn't matter if we change this to say, Quan, one to win six. So this is essentially a fixed parlay platform, right? Any three leg -like parlay, you're betting one to win six. So we've gone through the math a ton of times. And long story short, on Underdog Fantasy, in a three pick entry, you're getting the implied odds, the implied price of minus 122. So if this is confusing to you, we have a bunch of other strategy videos. Um, also, you know, I'll be giving out some plays on Twitter, kind of explaining things on Twitter, as well as writing on the Odds Jam blog, trying to make it more clear um, exactly how you can make money off Underdog Fantasy. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's get into it. So the first play I have is pretty simple. So there, I actually had a few plays for the Bills-Lions game, but now this video is too late, so whatever. Let's just start with um, um, this play right here. So that's actually not what I wanted because that includes the last game. It's what I wanted is right here, Michael Gallup under three and a half receptions. So again, you're getting the implied odds of minus 122 on underdog. So you want to find value at minus 122. So the easiest way to do that is you ruthlessly compare the lines on underdog to those on the sports books, right? And that's exactly what Odds Jam does for you is it takes, you know, the millions and millions of odds across the sports betting market on underdog fantasy on the sports books and consolidates them to let you search for value. So here we can see it's a big line discrepancy, right? Caesars has this minus 160, FanDuel minus 146, DraftKings minus 165. 10 bet minus 165. Bet online minus 159. Pinnacle, the sharpest, most efficient betting market, minus 168. So overall, the market completely agrees that Michael Gallup, his under three and a half receptions, should be heavily juiced. So this is a play with value. And value is all that matters as a sports better. You know, people don't get that. People always think it's about the sports. They don't really get that. The way that sports books make money is they charge the big, they charge the juice. Underdog fantasy is no different. The implied juice in the three pick entries, minus 122. So all you need are three picks that look great at minus 122 odds, right? So Justin Jefferson, under six and a half receptions, looks good. You can filter for whatever books you use. You know, it's the same thing in sports betting, right? Here, it's like, yeah, C.D. Lamb, under 75 and a half receiving yards at plus 106 seems pretty dang good, considering no other sports books giving us better than minus 103, right? So... In this case, you know, we have very high confidence that this play is positive EV, you know, because all the sports books are telling us the same thing. So even with the VIG removed, once you remove the VIG from these sports books, we're still getting a ton of value to the fair odds, right? The odds without the VIG. So when you can get plays, you know, in your underdog entry and Pinnacle, the sharpest bookmaker in the world, has it juiced to minus 168, that is a very clear indication you're doing the right thing. You're finding the right bets. So that's the first play I went with. And then um, I also like to use this Odds Jam screen. So let me just pull it up very briefly and then I can show you guys kind of what I ended up doing to zone in on some more sharp plays. So I went here and then I went to player receptions because we were already finding a lot of value in receptions. So I figured I'd stay looking there. Um, and I ended up finding a couple good big line discrepancies. So typically what I do is I just scan quickly and look for where prize picks and underdog or underdog in the sports books have different lines from one another. So here, for example, you can see C.D. Lamb, his receptions yard line is six on underdog. Every sports book and prize picks has it at five and a half. So it seems like there would be some value on the under six, right? But obviously the jump from four to four and a half is a lot bigger than six to six and a half. So another play that stood out to me is right here, right? So this is for the night game. We have Adam Thielen under four receptions. Seems pretty dang good on underdog fantasy. You know, all the sports books, they have the over three and a half, slightly juiced. You know, if you just look across the market for Adam Thielen, it's like most bookies have it juiced, minus 150, you know, whatever. And we can get it right here at the under at minus 122. So that seems pretty good. The CD Lamb play we, we went through, but here's an even better one. 
right? So we already went through this Gallup one, but here's an even better one. Tony Pollard. Prize picks has his line at two and a half. Ten bet, Caesars, they have his line at two and a half. Every sports book has his line slightly juiced towards the over at two and a half, but not every sports book. You can see Pinnacle, same thing as the odds jam column, has his over under two and a half at minus 115. Right? So it seems pretty good. Same with Noah Brown, right? Here are big discrepancies. Two and a half. The entire market's at two and a half. Underdog's at three. So the value's on the under. Noah Brown, the entire market's still at two and a half. Underdog's at two. So the value's on the over, right? Um, so, and lines aren't really juiced. That's another thing, right? Like here, you can see, okay, underdog's at two, but the sports books are at two and a half. But like they have the under so heavily juiced to like minus 200 that getting over two even though it's half a reception lower, over two doesn't seem as good. Whereas here, it's like the under two and a half is barely even juiced, and we can get the over two. That seems pretty great, and all these sports books are telling us the same thing. So what I ended up locking in is, let's go ahead. I know I have a lot of plays open. Um, so again, like the Reynolds, all these ones were just the EV plays that I mentioned. Um, but here we can see Brown, Gallup, under, under, Thielen. This was from the EV page. These two we found on the screen. And then we can continue to go through, and I thought there were some more. Maybe not. But long story short, this is the play I guess we're going to go with. And I like it. Hopefully you guys are able to tail it, and let's make some money.